Hey, what is it guys? Welcome back to this game tutorial. Last time what we did is we created all these little texture here. We actually split them in um, separate sprites so we can easily go ahead and select through them on this menu. So in this episode, what we're going to do is we're actually going to create our player and apply these texture right on top of him when we click uh, on the good skin. So uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create ourselves our player prefab right now. So let's go in game object. Let's start it off as a sphere. Let's move it at the origin of the world like we always do. And here is our player. Now this guy is going to need a different name. Let's call him uh, player ball or player something, whatever. And you're going to go ahead and create a new material for him as well. So go under create and you are going to choose create a new material call this however you'd like, I'll call it player material and now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to um, choose the parent sprite so if you go in albedo up here in your shader, your player material shader you're going to choose the texture that has all the uh, other texture on it so once you have that, go ahead and drag and drop this on your player and he's going to look like this for now um, while we're at it, let's go ahead and save this while we're here. So let's go ahead and drag and drop this player right inside of our prefab folder. So this way we can pretty much just spawn it uh, at any time we want. Okay. Now the way this works is we will need to actually change the tiling and the offset of that uh, shader for it to work properly. So if you take a look at this right now, he has all the colors that uh, well he could have. So this is definitely not something we want. To change that, we are going to go in the player material shader and you're going to modify the tiling for 0.25 in X and also 0.25 in Y. Now if you had a texture that had a 5x5 five five grid, so say you had 5 texture in width and also 5 texture in height, then you need to put this on uh, 0.2. And if you had 10, then 0 0.1, and so on. So you pretty much just need to divide 1 by the amount of texture you have in each axis. So uh, for our case, we only have 4. So 0 0.25 will do the job. And now to get the yellow texture, we have to do 0 0.75 here. Okay. So this is completed. Uh, well, this isn't completed, but we need to actually uh, turn this into a script. So we're actually going to go back inside of our main menu script, which is pretty much where we'll be just taking care of that. And we are going to make a function that will make our life quite easier. So below pretty much everything, we're going to create a function, a private void. And let's just call this uh, change player skin. And it's going to take a index as a parameter. So uh, integer index. Okay, so now over here we need to start manipulating our player material. But first off, we actually need a reference to that player material. So let's go up here and create ourselves a public material. I'm just going to zoom in a bit. So public material, and this is going to be the player material. Now, as always, we're going to minimize our script, go in our main menu, and assign the player material as uh, the field over here. So let's just go ahead and uh, take our new player material, drag and drop it right here. Okay. But one thing I'd like to say before we actually go any further is that I've made a little mistake when it was time to create our texture. So, um, well, first off, I went ahead and I created the rest of my texture. So now we fill the 16 uh, texture slot. But the way this works is the other way around actually, so texture number zero uh, is this one, but when we read on the UV, it's actually this one down here. So the UV is um, starting from down here and when we actually do our sprite picking, when we choose which uh, texture goes inside of the menu first, it starts here. So it's a little bit complicated when it comes time to assign in the good index to this uh, player pretty much but we're gonna find a workaround uh, one thing I'd like to ask you to do though is just go ahead and complete this grid it's going to be a little bit less confusing for you if you have the whole grid filled so uh, yeah, just go ahead and try to do that once you're done 
import it back inside of your game and go back inside of the sprite editor. Slice this again by grid size, 256 by 256, and it's going to create the rest of the grid, uh, grid cells. Okay, so now what we have to do from here is we need to start coding our change player skin function and we need to uh, make it so it's actually going to take the index and uh, do our little swap here. So swap from here to there. Okay, so let's start by coding really simple stuff. Um, in the end, what we need to do is we need to set the texture offset of the material. So let's just go ahead and do that. Player material set texture offset and this takes in a property name and also an offset as a vector too. So the property name is going to be, and you have to write this exactly the same way as I do because this is what it's uh, called inside of the shader. It's underscore main text. And make sure you get the capital rights as well. And uh, that's the property we're going to be changing. And as for the vector, we are going to create ourselves a new vector too. Uh, with values that we don't have just yet, so let's just leave it empty for now. Now, the first value is going to be x, so I'll declare myself a float x up here, and this is basically going to be index modulo, and then the amount of texture that we have on the x axis. In our case, it is 4, so I'll just type in 4, and then we'll do times 0 0.25, which is the size of a uh, single cell. So you could put these in a constant field if you wish. I'll just leave mine there because I don't plan on having any different size of a texture. And then below that we'll do float y is equal to index divided by uh, the amount of texture in y, so again 4 times 0 0.25. And uh, also make sure this uh, gives you an int because now this is going to give us a float and we don't want that for our logic to work. So basically now if we say go ahead and change the player skin to index uh, 4, it should go 0, 1, 2, 3, then it hits the modulo and it goes back to index 0 in X and uh, it should get over here on the fourth of our texture, so white. If we tell him go ahead and change the player skin to um, say 6, then we'll do the same exact thing. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 would get this color. Okay, let's just go ahead and try it out first before we go any further. Uh, make sure you put the values inside of your new vector, so the float x and also the float y in there. And I'll go ahead and change my player skin at the start. So now let's just give it a uh, pretty much any index. Say we want the brown color, so it's going to be index number seven. If we go like this, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go ahead and shoot him that. See if everything works fine. Press play. And our ball is now brown, okay. So uh, yeah, we start from here. So this is sprite number zero. This is sprite number five. 6, 7. But in our UV, what actually happens with the code we currently have is if we tell him, go ahead and get me the index 0, it's actually going to start from here. So it's going to start here, and if you tell him, okay, go get me index number 3, then 0, 1, 2, 3, it's going this way. So it's starting from the bottom and it's going uh, to the top. So basically, when we tell him, get me the index number 4, it clears this whole row and then it's, it goes here at the white. So um, this doesn't fit our, well this is, doesn't fit our uh, template that we've put there. Uh, we actually need for index 0 to be this one up here. So what needs to happen is we need to take our y, so in this case if it was 0 it would start here, we need to take our y and actually bump it up here in case if it's 0. Now, if we're on the uh, the white square over here, our y would be 0 0.25. We would need to bump it up to 0 0.50. So it, it gets this index instead. So it's going to be a little bit confusing, but just, just tag along. It's fairly simple in the end. 
Now there is probably a better way to do it, but I'll simply do it using if uh, statement. So if y is equal to 0.0f, uh, I won't put brackets in here. So if y is equal to 0 .0, 0.0, I'll say y is now equal to 0 0.25. Else if, and uh, if you're gonna do the same exact way as me, just make sure you put a else. Else if y is equal to 0 0.25, then y is now equal to 0 0.5 and else if y is equal to 0 0.75 then y is now equal to 0. Point, um, is it 25? yeah okay so now we we reverse so we have to go uh, downward from there else if y is equal to, oh, actually we missed the 50. Okay, so if if y is equal to 50, then we go back to 0 0.25. And finally, if uh, y is equal to 0 0.25, then we do y is equal to zero. Okay, that's a little bit messy right here, but uh, don't worry, it works. <laughs> Let's go ahead and try this out in game, actually. So say we tell um, we tell our start over here to change the player skin for skin number zero. If we take a look at our uh, picture here, this should be the gray color. Now let's go ahead and press play. It's actually putting the gray color. Let's try another one to make sure everything works. Actually, let's try one on every single column. So uh, let's take pink. So pink is index number one, actually zero, one, two, three, four, five. So if we go back in our code, type in 5, press play, we should get pink. And of course we get it. Now we go back, let's try black, so that's 5 plus 4. And we are actually hoping to get a black color here. And we are, okay. Next one, and final one. Let's go for this green over here. So that was 9. 10, 11, uh, it's actually index 15. So last test should get us this very color. And it matches, okay, so good. We got this out of the way now, that's a good thing we did. Um, let's keep this ball around and let's use it as a preview for our little guy here for our panel. So pretty much what I'll do is I'll just scale it up quite a lot actually <laughs> and I'll move my camera so it looks at the uh, this over here and I'll use it as a preview just temporarily I'm not going to leave it there uh, forever but I'll just put it around here and now we can start coding our button so when we press on our button we're actually going to see the live change on our player okay I'm gonna take the camera and put it back where it should be. Now if I do to shop, I want um, I want my button to actually change the color of this ball up here. So like we did before, we're actually going to use this uh, very same function that we did. So just go ahead and copy this and we're going to say container.getComponent the button component, add a listener and instead of doing a load level, we're actually going to do change player skin. And we're going to send a index, an index of uh, which button it's, it's coming from. So basically we need to keep track of which button uh, we are right now. So what I'll do is I'll go up here and right above the texture, I'll actually just declare an int that I'll use as a index. So int texture index is equal to zero. And every time we finish the for each, I'll simply do texture index. Uh, where is it at? Texture index plus plus, which is the equivalent of saying texture index plus equal one. Okay. And now when we do change player skin, I'm actually going to send that very texture index. Let's go ahead and try this out in game like we always do. Hit to shop. And when I press on the white color, it turns white. When I press on this, it doesn't work. 
so it is pretty much stuck on the white color and I think it's uh, it's the same exact reason we need to declare a string here so let's just go ahead and try that uh, I'll declare myself a int I'll just call index is equal to texture index and I'll use this uh, field that I've declared inside of the for each instead okay and as you can see it now works good so that's a little bug I don't quite understand just yet but uh, just make sure that you declare your int inside of the for each statement if you have any idea why this bug happens I'm not I'm not too good yet with uh, these predicate lambda function so if you do know why this happens please let me know in the comment section below I'd be more than happy to learn why this doesn't work okay but we found a workaround that's the most important thing and that's actually going to be pretty much it for this episode guys um, next one what we're gonna do is we're going to take that value that we get when we actually choose a skin and we're going to save it in our player pref so whenever we load the game we get the same color uh, back and a little bit later on we'll also add a mechanic where we need to uh, actually buy these things from the shop before we ac we can actually use them because right now we can just choose whatever we want um, and it's just going to apply it to our player but a little bit later on we want to add the cost to these and we also want to make nicer texture because these ones are not are not really uh, pretty looking okay guys so uh, thanks again for watching. If you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this or if you learned something, please leave me a like. I really appreciate it. And also subscribe for more tutorials. So guys, once more, thanks again for watching and I will be seeing you in the next episode.